Welcome everyone to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition it's Darkman, brought to us by Ocean. Darkman is based on the film of the same name, starring Liam Neeson. In Darkman, we play as a scientist who created a new form of synthetic skin for burn victims. He himself is attacked by mobsters and ends up being burned over an entire body. He then goes out for revenge as the vigilante known as Darkman. However, he is able to maintain enough of his scientific equipment in order to create new synthetic skin so that he can go out in public as certain people. However, it can only last for a small amount of time. Throughout Darkman the game, we'll actually use this ability to turn into different members of the mobster's gang in order to infiltrate and take them out. After a brief look at the story, we're now able to start the game, and you can actually play the game one or two players taking turns. Darkman is an action platformer with some pretty unique physics, as you're able to actually climb up walls, as well as balance on tight ropes. To balance on the ropes, you actually have to use the A and B button in order to stay balanced or else you fall off. Most of the perils throughout the levels can defeat you in one hit, so you have to be very careful. Enemies, however, take several hits to take out, and actually can hit you several times before you're taken out. Level 2 is the first of these moving car levels where you have to memorize the track, and then go along the track in the right correct paths in order to get through it to the next stage. When fighting enemies, though, the timing to your hits is a little bit tricky, and it's going to take some getting used to. Once you have gotten used to it, you should be able to take enemies out rather easily, but it will take a while before you get control of that. Be very careful of the bubbles as they filter out from the bottom, as if they hit you, they will take you out in one hit. You have two different meters, your health meter, which is below your score, and then you have your meter to the far left, which will slowly decrease as the game goes on, and you have to keep refilling it with the different amounts of ink. After the first three levels, we now go to another gameplay element, where we actually have to take pictures of a different mob member. Now this whole part is a little bit tricky, and it really doesn't affect anything as it's more of a bonus round. You have to take certain amount of pictures of the mobster that it tells you to. Every time you do, you'll get higher and higher point score. You have a certain amount of pictures you're allowed per time, and you have a timer of about a minute in order to take these pictures. If you move your camera lens into the frame of a guy shooting at you, your camera will get knocked down to the bottom, and you will lose a few seconds. However, as long as you get a couple pictures of the mobster, you'll be able to continue on the game. And honestly, I'm not even sure if you take no pictures at all, that you'll still actually be able to continue. After you complete the level, you'll see how many pictures you took, close-ups, long shots, and then it'll give you a grade on the mask you're able to create from it. Now for the next couple of levels, you'll play as the mobster that you took pictures of. Each of them plays a little bit differently, so it varies up the gameplay some. As we play as Polly, you're actually able to use a club to take out your enemies. 
One of the hardest parts, though, about the game is getting used to the momentum of jumping. Getting the right amount of momentum in order to get over certain areas will take some time to get used to, because you'll end up missing some of your jumps and falling into some of the gaps. In this stage, start by climbing up and taking out the enemy on the next platform so that you can get over to the left to continue climbing up this area. Be careful of the buzz saws as you make your way over the platforms. This level is the third and final stage that we actually play as the Pauly character. Just like the previous levels, we have the same enemies and the same types of gaps to climb up. If you've gotten used to taking out those enemies as well as dodging the buzz saws, you shouldn't have too much trouble with this part. When you get to the end of the stage, you actually have to deal with Polly, the mobster that we currently are dressed as. Getting used to the timing of your hits is going to be crucial, and it takes a good amount of hits in order to take him out. But as long as your timing gets down, you shouldn't have too much trouble. Next up is another type of different gameplay level, as we now actually hang from a helicopter as we try to fly through the area. Graphically, this area looks really good for an NES title. Getting used to it is going to be pretty much memorization in order to get past all the perils of running into the different vehicles. And if your health has gotten low at this point, be sure to grab all the health that you can during this level. You should be able to refill your health cage all the way back up. Thankfully, there's not too many different types of objects to avoid throughout the stage, and it's rather short. So, with a little bit of practice, you should be able to get past. Once we're done, it's time to take some more pictures to become another one of the henchmen. Our target for this second photo level is Skip. Now, he's probably one of the funnest of the bandits to play as, because he only has one leg, and this allows him to hop along every time he moves, so he's actually a little bit interesting to play as and different than some of the other characters. After the timer runs up, we see how many pictures once again we took, and we get another excellent rating. The next levels take place inside of a funhouse, as we play as the enemy with one leg. Using him to jump around and be able to get over things is actually pretty fun, and his levels are pretty neatly designed. 
you have to use the springs and get past the clown enemies while also working on conveyor belts that switch your directions. So you have to be very careful that when you're pressing left on them, you're actually going to be going in the right direction. Level 2 begins with a whole large section of different